Yeah, back at it. Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Bam, ma'am, so my Captain Hook when they used to uh, put the law for us. Okay. Hey, um, so I was wanting, I was looking around, I wanted to see if, you, um, what's the truth in it? Like, and basically, this video is called The Black Slave Owner and breeder William Ellison. Mm -hmm. William Ellison was a, was a black slave owner. He, he came from being a slave and then he became a slave owner. He's a slave owner on a plantation and, I, and history tries to write this off and it doesn't matter just because this is Black History Month or whatever, it's, this is the truth. History does not talk about the black slave owners. It really only talks about the white slave owners and why we should be oppressed because the white man slaved us. But there were actually many black slave owners, many. There were many plantation owners that had land and blacks and they bred other black people. Okay. Crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I want us to um, listen, to, listen to this. I want to see. I think it's like a news story or something that that they did a while ago. You can tell by how old it is, by like the pixelation of it. But, yeah, um, this is interesting. Yeah. It really is. This is the Burrow House, a plantation home in tiny Stateburg, South Carolina, about 10 miles west of Sumter. It has been the site of many Forrest Gump-like moments. General Thomas Sumter lived here. Former Governor Stephen Miller lived here. Joel Poinsett, for whom the Poinsettia is named, died here. Even Samuel Maverick, whose son became the namesake for the term Independent Rebel, owned this house on the property. A lot of really important but not splashy historic People have wandered through here. Perhaps the quietest of them all has arguably the most important story to tell. It began here in 1935 when three young girls discovered a stack of letters while playing in the basement of this home. Those letters, now held at USC's Carolinian Library, tell the story of a slave named April. There's been a really good job of whitewashing a very awkward discussion. It's a hugely awkward discussion. In 1802, a white plantation owner named William Ellison lent one of his young slaves, April, to work for a gin maker in Winsboro. April quickly became the go-to man for repairing the expensive car. See, I read something that said William Ellison. I said, I'll hollow it. Hold on. Let me pull that back a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I read something when it was talking about William Ellison. It said that Ellison, Ellison was a black man and it was talking about April but it says black slave owner and breeder William Ellison but it just said white didn't it did I just hear no one? he didn't say what the race was he did, they were know. talking about how this is um, a, a sticky subject to discuss which made me think that yeah he is black okay it was a white plantation owner named William Ellison lent one of his young slaves April to work for a gin maker in Winsboro April quickly became the go-to man for repairing the expensive cotton gins throughout the Sumter area. They send him out to the plantations and they take them apart. He would sharpen them on location. And that's why he heard about Stateburg. He came through here as a young man. You know, he said, well, when he bought his freedom or whatever, he came here. The center of plantation country, the wealthiest area of South Carolina. He changed his name. April was now known as William Ellison the name of his former white owner. Get it. His okay. gin business prospered. He bought this home, hundreds of acres of land, and eventually 68 slaves to work that land. Okay. Granger McCoy now lives in the Ellison home and says he often finds old cotton gin blades. What did the Ellison say when they come? They're looking for the home place. All descendants of what many of us thought an impossible oxymoron, a black slave owner. I had a black ophthalmologist come through here, Ellison, and we sat on this couch right here. And his great-great-granddaddy owned 68 slaves, and here I am, white, over here, and my great-great-granddaddy didn't own any slaves. And it, wow. it was like a uh, somebody blew a dog whistle in a kennel, everybody was just kind of turning their head. Like, say what? Not say what? knowing how to handle all this. History tumbles you. And what little we can learn about Ellison as a slave owner isn't pretty. The book Black Masters chronicles Ellison's life in the antebellum South and suggests that his slaves were the worst fed and clothed of any in Stateburg. See, I told see, I told you. I told you. <laughs> Wait. 
I was sitting here thinking, okay, so maybe he treated the slaves like extra kind and he was really pleasant towards them because, you know, of the experience right. and he knew what they went through. But what? See, I told you, I told you, man, I promise you. Um, I know I had read about black slave owners treating their slaves the worst. And then people were like, somebody debated me in the um, section. I'm like, yeah, but white treated them worse. That's not true. A lot of times, a lot of times y'all don't know S-H-I-T. You don't know anything. You don't know what you're talking about. It said here clearly, and this is not the only one where I read that they were treating slaves bad. They were treating slaves badly. They were not treating them right. They were not treating them fair. And you would think just because he, he had black skin, he was going to treat another black skin person better. But no, he's like a treat him way worse. It also suggests that Ellison was a slave breeder, selling off infant girls, a practice even some white owners found cruel. Whatever the case, Ellison certainly had a good relationship with other white aristocracy. This contract shows that Ellison didn't just buy a home in wealthy Stateburg, he bought it directly from former Governor Stephen Miller, a governor and former slave trading property. He was the wealthiest black man in South Carolina, the fourth wealthiest in the South, wealthier than more than 90% of whites. Just wow. a few hundred yards from the Ellison home is the Ellison graveyard, private, neither mixed with other white nor black tombstones, symbolic of his unusual position in the pre-war South, a position so few of us even knew existed. Whatever happened during Reconstruction and then up through the Jim Crow era, anything and everything that had to deal with the relationships between the blacks and the whites just went underground. And may have remained so, if not for a stack of letters found under his house. For Hidden Columbia, Anderson Burns, ABC Columbia News. Wow. I think we heard about this on another video, but not this particular person, but blacks enslaving other blacks. But this is like very new. I'm trying to think which one we may have heard it on. But this this is few and, f and further between. Right. Yeah. And not only did. Um, not only did he. Treat them badly. But he was ultra wealthy. He was the he was richer than any any white person now in South Carolina. That's the, so the wealthiest black in South Carolina. The wealthiest. No, he was the wealthiest man. Wow. And so I get. Um, so let's now let's let's be now let's be honest. I mean, it should be it should make people feel a little bit. I know it, I know it's not a comfortable subject, but it should make people feel more like, okay, so that's why sometimes as black people we don't treat it other others blacks as you know each other well. We never have, we never have. We some of us work with each other, a lot of us didn't, and that's a prime example. He got himself well wealthy as he stepped on other blacks and made them do this, and they felt no remorse for them. And he was he was just like um um. You can't even call that no Uncle Tom because that wasn't who he was selling out to. He was he was he was his own boss. He was his own boss. Right, but I was gonna say that the way he was had to come from his indoctrination of the slave oh, mentality and absolutely. how he felt. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's how it still is, you know, with blacks today. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the biggest part of what, you know, slavery did, you know, worldwide. Yeah. However, this is something that's not talked yeah. about. Yeah, absolutely. Hardly at all. And I would like to find more information about this because the more claims well, I would say look at continue to hear, the more it substantiates, you know, this right here. I would say find more in find more articles on others. I wouldn't just focus right. on Right. No, not him. I'm talking about this subject. Right. Not him. And it said in the title, he was not only a black slave owner, he was a breeder. Yeah. And when you breed, you breed for other workers. You make it's like almost like pit bulls. Like, I, you know, I ain't trying to be. Uh, let's give a good example. You're like, man, I want, I need some uh, new workers. So y'all need to go over and y'all need y'all need to go back here. I'm putting y'all back here, and y'all need to go and mate like animals. And so and that was, and that's just what it was across the world. So that's letting you know white, whites and blacks did that. Whites and blacks did that. And um, stuff like this needs to be in the history book and not erased from the history book because well, that gives 
because when you put this in history books it lets people know that it's that we that you could start thinning out them color lines feeling and my, start thinning that down a little bit my well is not for what you're saying my well is like i was about to say no me. no no my well is in regards to having you know us bring more of this you know to the forefront and I kind of lost my point based off what you were, what you were saying um, earlier. Go back to what what, you, what did you just say? Because I, I had a really about good that, point. that this stuff needs to be put in history books instead of wiped from the history books. And you put it in the history books that makes that stops the whole that thins out all this this color and racism, especially that that, that a certain party political party is they're using that a hundred percent. But if this stuff like this put on the forefront, I guarantee you, man. People, people gonna be squeezing their butt cheeks together. Would be like, what for real? Yes. Well, we know that slavery is a worldwide thing. Thank you, Lord. No, it's it's been a worldwide thing, and we know that blacks own other blacks in Africa. You talking about the you? You talking about the Western culture, Western, Western culture. civilization, Western, yeah, yeah, I ain't USA? Because of course, other, other blacks words, owning people. other slaves was nothing new. But this is the country culture. where they complain about the most about blacks were done the worst. Okay. So we're bringing it, looping it around to the U.S. Then, you know, I do think it's relevant to have more, you know, cases of this, you know, talked about and discussed. Man, we're going to do a couple more videos of this. We're going to find articles and stuff going this because I think to me, out of all the information that we've studied, not not this is probably the highest regard, um, the highest one of the biggest understandings that I would like to talk about because this is this is a huge deal that does not get talked. You see how they say it? Well, the girls on, in 1937 found the information out of the house and then when they when they were having a conversation, someone was having a conversation with somebody else, everybody turned like, what? Are you serious? Right. Yeah. I was going to say, too, even though we know we don't know how the blacks were really being treated when they were in, in other countries, but we do know that they were always mistreated regardless. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I just you know still don't want to slip past that. We know, I don't want to slip past it, but let's come home, man. Come on, let's let's okay, level out the yeah. truth. Let's most, level out the truth. Most definitely. Because I'm, I'm not, I I'm not, I'm not a. Um, I'm with it. So I'm have a problem with that. I'm not. I don't have that entitlement spirit. I I already know. I know my ancestors were slaves. I know that white people were in my family. I know that. You know, now I'm learning that you know, for all I know, my ancestors could enslave other blacks. You know, it's just now it don't feel it don't feel eerie. I mean, that's the whole thing of slavery is 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 a it's still a terrible thing when you look at look at how that how that system worked well people doing other people like chattel, but you don't feel eerie because you know that you could have had an uncle that was enslaved and fit the other yeah, fit the slaves. That's crazy. Yeah. And that they were being mistreated, you know. I'm not scared doesn't of this whole surprise slavery topic me. no more, man. It I'm doesn't just, surprise me that they were being mistreated, you know, by other blacks. We know all your people were white, white. So, um, Please. handshake. What? That's how all your, your, your family group can greet each other. You silly. No, I'm just kidding. You silly. But yeah, this is good. This is, you know, this is information that needs to be discussed and talked about. <laughs> help him please all right man this, help but I, him, I, I really, please. this was super this was super engaging i'm definitely gonna put this up and i want to go into to find the names of a lot of the other black enslavers and i'm gonna post videos on that because we are i don't feel like i need to we need to know about the, the white slavers because that's the america's already hanging on its hanging you know hanging like this about oh you know like oh my god yeah we know we know but let's put out there just something interesting White and, white and slave is not interesting. That's what we've been taught since kids. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Facts. Just give me the facts. That's right. Like, <laughs> comes, like, comes, subscribe. Don't take a nose out, but comment down in the section below if you want some. Mo. I know y'all do. Mo. Bye bye. Yeah.